Imagine a world where consciousness isn't just confined to humans or animals, but is instead a fundamental feature of everything around us. Every rock, leaf, drop of water, and even the tiniest atom might possess some form of awareness. At first glance, it sounds like a concept ripped from the pages of a science fiction novel or a poetic imagination. Yet, this is the core idea behind panpsychism, a fascinating and hotly debated theory in philosophy. Panpsychism challenges our conventional understanding of the universe, offering an alternative to the traditional dichotomy between the physical and the mental. It suggests that consciousness is not an emergent property confined to complex organisms, but rather an intrinsic quality embedded in all matter. This isn't just a whimsical idea. It has deep implications for science, ethics, and our very perception of reality. But where did this idea come from? How does it fit into our current understanding of the world? And perhaps most provocatively, could panpsychism hold the key to solving the age-old mystery of consciousness? Let's unravel this profound and mind-bending theory by exploring its origins, its philosophical underpinnings, and the debates it continues to ignite among scholars and scientists alike. At its heart, panpsychism is a radical reimagining of consciousness. It proposes that consciousness isn't a phenomenon exclusive to humans, animals, or even living organisms. Instead, it is a fundamental feature of reality, as intrinsic to the universe as mass, charge, or energy. According to this perspective, every particle of matter, from the atoms in your body to the molecules in a blade of grass or even the quarks in a distant star, carries a rudimentary form of awareness. This doesn't mean that rocks or atoms have thoughts, emotions, or self-awareness in the way humans do. Instead, their consciousness might be unimaginably simple, a basic feeling or awareness that's far removed from the complex experiences we associate with being alive. Yet, it suggests that the building blocks of existence are imbued with the seeds of consciousness. Panpsychism directly challenges the traditional worldview shaped by dualism, the idea that mind and matter are two separate and distinct entities. Philosophers like René Descartes, the father of dualism, saw the mind as fundamentally different from the material world. In contrast, panpsychism dissolves this boundary, asserting that mind and matter are two sides of the same coin inseparable and intertwined. This perspective also addresses one of the most enduring mysteries in philosophy and science, the hard problem of consciousness. How do subjective experiences, the vivid redness of red or the pain of a headache, arise from physical processes like neural activity in the brain? Despite decades of research, no scientific explanation has fully bridged the gap between the physical and the experiential. Thinkers like Thomas Nagel have drawn attention to this puzzle famously asking, what is it like to be a bat? Nagel's question underscores the difficulty of understanding consciousness from an external, objective perspective. Panpsychism offers an alternative to the notion that consciousness emerges only in complex systems like human brains. Instead, it argues that consciousness has always been present, woven into the fabric of existence itself. This isn't a fringe idea confined to philosophy classrooms. In recent years, Panpsychism has gained traction among scientists, particularly those grappling with the enigmatic relationship between the mind and the physical world. It raises profound questions about what it means to be conscious and whether the universe itself might have a mental dimension that we are only beginning to comprehend. The idea that consciousness might permeate all of existence isn't a modern notion. Its roots stretch deep into the history of philosophy, spanning cultures and eras. Panpsychism finds its earliest advocates in ancient traditions, where thinkers sought to understand the connection between the material world and the mental or spiritual essence of reality. For the Stoics, the universe was animated by a pervasive logos, a divine rational principle that governed and unified all things. This logos wasn't restricted to humans or gods, it was embedded in nature itself, giving life and purpose to every aspect of the cosmos. Similarly, Plato envisioned the universe as a living entity, endowed with a world soul that harmonized its many parts. 
For him, the cosmos wasn't just a mechanical system, but a dynamic, soulful presence. Moving forward to the 17th century, Baruch Spinoza offered a profound reinterpretation of the relationship between mind and matter. In his monistic framework, Spinoza argued that everything in nature was an expression of God, or substance. Mind and matter, in his view, were not separate entities, but two manifestations of the same underlying reality. This made consciousness a universal feature, inseparable from the fabric of existence. Fast forward to the late 19th and early 20th centuries, when thinkers like William James and Alfred North Whitehead breathed new life into these ancient ideas. James, a pioneer of pragmatism, explored the continuity between mind and matter, suggesting that the universe might be better understood as a mosaic of overlapping experiences rather than a collection of inert objects. Whitehead's process philosophy took this further, proposing that reality itself is not composed of static substances, but of dynamic processes and interrelated experiences. In Whitehead's view, even the smallest particles of matter possess a form of experiential reality, challenging the rigid materialism of his time. In recent years, Philip Goff has brought panpsychism back into the spotlight, arguing that it might hold the key to resolving the hard problem of consciousness. In his book Galileo's Error, Goff critiques the scientific revolution for narrowing our understanding of the world. He suggests that by focusing solely on measurable, physical properties, science has sidelined consciousness, a fundamental feature of reality that cannot be reduced to equations or measurements. According to Goff, panpsychism offers a framework to reconcile our subjective experiences with the objective world, bridging the gap between the mental and the material. Throughout its evolution, panpsychism has continually defied categorization, blending metaphysics, philosophy of mind, and even theology. Its enduring appeal lies in its audacious promise to explain consciousness not as a rare anomaly, but as a universal and intrinsic property of the cosmos. Though panpsychism finds its home in the realm of philosophy, certain scientific discoveries and theories seem to echo its core ideas, sparking intriguing possibilities for bridging the gap between science and metaphysics. At its heart, panpsychism challenges us to reconsider the nature of consciousness, and modern science, particularly physics, offers fascinating parallels that seem to resonate with this ancient concept. One such connection lies in the realm of quantum physics, a field that has shattered many of our intuitive understandings of reality. The double-slit experiment, for instance, revealed a startling phenomenon. Particles, such as electrons or photons, behave differently depending on whether they are being observed. When unobserved, particles exist as a probability wave, but when observed, they collapse into a definitive state. This raises profound questions. Does consciousness play a role in shaping physical reality? And if so, could this imply a deeper link between mind and matter? While the interpretation of these findings remains controversial, they undoubtedly challenge the classical view of a detached, purely objective universe. The work of physicist David Bohm further aligns with panpsychist thought. Bohm proposed a revolutionary perspective in his theory of the implicate order, suggesting that the universe is not made up of independent, isolated parts, but is instead an interconnected whole. In this holistic view, consciousness and matter are not separate entities, but deeply intertwined aspects of the same underlying reality. Bohm's ideas mirror the panpsychist belief that consciousness is a fundamental, pervasive feature of existence, present even in the most basic particles of matter. Additionally, the emerging field of integrated information theory, IIT, developed by neuroscientist Giulio Tononi, offers a scientific framework that seems to align with panpsychist principles. IIT posits that consciousness arises from the integration of information, and it doesn't restrict this integration to human brains alone. By this logic, any system, biological or otherwise, that integrates information in a sufficient and meaningful way might possess some level of consciousness. While this idea stops short of asserting that all matter is conscious, it opens the door to a more inclusive understanding of consciousness, blurring the lines between the animate and inanimate. 
Though these scientific theories and findings remain speculative, they highlight how panpsychism pushes the boundaries of traditional science. By suggesting that consciousness might not be a unique product of complex brains, but an intrinsic feature of the universe itself, panpsychism invites both scientists and philosophers to rethink the foundations of reality. This convergence of science and panpsychism raises tantalizing questions. Could consciousness be the missing puzzle piece in our understanding of the universe? And if so, what implications might this have for our understanding of nature, ethics, and even the pursuit of knowledge itself? As science continues to explore the mysteries of quantum mechanics, information theory, and the nature of consciousness, panpsychism provides a bold and imaginative lens through which to view these discoveries. Could panpsychism be hinting at a deeper, almost mystical connection between all things? Carl Jung's concept of the collective unconscious provides an intriguing psychological perspective that aligns with the broader implications of panpsychism. According to Jung, every human being taps into a shared reservoir of unconscious knowledge filled with universal symbols and archetypes. These patterns, be they the hero, the shadow, or the wise old sage, are not learned but rather inherited, existing beyond individual experience. In a similar vein, panpsychism proposes that consciousness might not be confined to individuals or even living beings. Instead, it suggests that consciousness could be a universal thread, a hidden dimension that weaves through everything, from the smallest particle to the vastness of galaxies. Imagine the entire universe as a web, where every atom, every entity, is connected by this subtle awareness. This perspective carries profound philosophical and even spiritual undertones. If consciousness is truly universal, it challenges the deeply ingrained notion that humans are separate from their environment. It shifts the narrative, encouraging us to see ourselves as part of a greater whole, where every piece, no matter how small, has intrinsic value and significance. Moreover, such an idea invites questions about the interconnectedness of life and the universe. Could panpsychism offer a framework for understanding the age-old intuition that everything is connected? Whether approached through scientific inquiry, philosophical reasoning, or spiritual exploration, the theory gives new meaning to our relationships, not just with other living beings, but with the cosmos itself. For some, this universal connection resonates on a deeply personal level, aligning with spiritual traditions that emphasize unity and oneness. For others, it's a call to rethink the boundaries between mind and matter, self and other. Whether you view it as a scientific hypothesis, a philosophical metaphor, or a spiritual truth, panpsychism invites us to consider the possibility that we're not isolated entities, but part of an intricate conscious tapestry. In this light, panpsychism doesn't just challenge our understanding of consciousness, it reimagines our place in the cosmos. What if, instead of being observers in a lifeless universe, we are co-participants in a vast, interconnected consciousness? So could a humble stone truly harbor consciousness? It's a question that feels like it belongs in the pages of science fiction, yet panpsychism asks us to take it seriously. This daring philosophical theory pushes the boundaries of what we think we know, urging us to confront the possibility that consciousness isn't confined to human brains or even to living things. Instead, it suggests that consciousness might be a fundamental, universal thread woven into the very fabric of existence. Panpsychism doesn't just tickle our curiosity, it forces us to reconsider our relationship with the universe. What if the stars above, the trees around us, and even the atoms in our coffee cups are, in some profound way, participants in the grand tapestry of awareness? Such a perspective redefines the way we approach life, nature, and even the inanimate. It transforms what might seem like a lifeless world into one brimming with hidden potential and connection. Thank you very much for watching and listening. See you in the next video. Goodbye.